benefits like the visual aids benefit, but also has housing, um, and I think a portion of the housing is set aside for those living with HIV, and a portion of the benefits actually goes directly to to the to offset costs for housing. So it's a great space here in New York, and it's a beautiful ballroom. Um, and Kelly McGowan will be doing the reading for Chloe. Um, Kelly, well actually, first I just want to um, point to the visual aids publication on Chloe's work. Chloe is really close to our hearts, and we recently, um, put out this book called Duets, which has a conversation between Alice O'Malley, uh, who knew Chloe very well and is a friend of Kelly's, um, and took this fantastic photo of, Kel of Chloe um, in conversation with Shay Gossett, and it's a fantastic conversation. Um, there's also a lot of Chloe's artwork reproduced, so if you're interested in Chloe and more, um, this is a great resource for that. So, um, and then here's Kelly, who has lived in the Lower East Side since moving into the Rock Against Racism spot in 1985. She directed the Gorilla Housing Program during Housing Works' founding years yes. and was Chloe's lover in the 90s when Chloe was the lead singer of Trans Sisters, which yes. is an amazing band. Um, together they led the Transgender Initiative and Positive Health Project in Midtown Manhattan and continued to be co-conspirators co until Chloe's ascension in 2011. Here's Kelly. Everybody. Um, I don't know about you, but my heart's been beating since this started. Um, it's been really beautiful to hear everybody. Um, I, there was so much to choose of Chloe's readings, and so I decided to just go with the, you know, flip the pages. And so I went into my Hotmail account, if you remember Hotmail, <laughs> and um, went into the Chloe folder and just scanned and found the sex work piece and I'm thinking I've been I don't know about you but I've been celebrating that um, um, Amnesty International just did this really big move about supporting decriminalization of sex work and that's kind of a big deal because they are you know they're a human rights organization they're a mainstream organization and um, and and one of the things that Chloe was so good at really is like discerning things like being irreverent and funny and discerning the difference and one of the big discerning that's happening now is like the difference between decriminalization decriminalizing sex work, legalizing sex work, and um, trafficking. And they're very different things. And this is one of the things she was so genius at, right? It was like just helping us like be fierce and clear about what really mattered when there was all these policy debates. She just cut right through and say, hello, you know. So here's a piece that came to us today that I wanted to read. This was an email that she sent me. It was the unedited version before. There was a magazine called um, Spread sex worker magazine. They asked her to do a piece. This was 2004. And I just want to give a little context because I'm going to use the T word and I just want you to all to know tranny. Um, I don't use it anymore because it's been, it's been, um, we've got this new teaching, right? That like, it, uh, just so the context of 2004, it was an in embracing. Like, we, like, tranny was an embracing. When Chloe got to be in the embrace of Jane County, you know, the last events, event, it was an embracing word. And now it's not, and we don't use it. But this is 2004, so I wanted to give that little like history. And I'll tell you today, she wouldn't be using it. Like she stopped using it, right? But here's some here's some history. So this is called Philanthropy Tranny Style by Chloe Faith Zubilo. I want a billionaire daddy-o, one who tricked the trannies with no emotional strings for over 20 years. I want to meet him the morning he wakes up with empty bones drained by his greedy appetite for tranny pussy. Insatiable, married man. He could have sent a few of us brilliantly minding ones to Harvard, for God's sake. I want this shrinking scaredy cat to hire me to run the nation's first tranny foundation. I want him to make amends to my entire beautifully vulnerable community who have jumped off hotel rooms while an interviewer signs a copy of a contract for Eddie Murphy to, in caps, not talk about transsexuals. Shame on you, Eddie. I want this discreet man to be so spiritually bankrupt that he becomes the only socially philanthropic sugar daddy and takes care of my baby sisters coming down the rocky runway in the meat market, if there was one anymore, because by this point there wasn't one in Manhattan anymore. It all got pushed out. Um, I'll be his HIV positive blonde New England equestrian, only tranny appointed by a mayor in this New York history. 
en route to my own honorary degree from junkie to Yale, ass kicking, surviving, me motherfucker. I want this poor soul to hand over the cash so I can feed my precious kids in fancy rehabs where they won't be called he 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 and put in cart put in rooms with men detoxing crack and all horny. I want him to give me carte blanche to the Betty Ford Clinic where teen tranny babies will share rooms with Bush's daughters one day and teach them how to braid their pretty Bush heads. Yeah, my broke ass on disability. Yeah, me, broke ass on disability, trying to gather data on HIV positive trans women living in New York City so someday, one day, we will see the needs of this underserved community. <laughs> Diamonds in the gutters, stepped on with less rights than junkies. I should know, because I was a junkie. I live in so much chronic pain, and the HIV meds have fucked up my bones set so badly, broken back from the meds causing osteopenia, did I say that right? Mm -hmm. And a titanium hip. Won't be riding horses now, they say. With this money, I would also buy huge billboards telling America that the HIV meds are causing heart attacks and fractures, and one needs new hips from it all, too. They wonder why HIV rates are soaring, like the early 80s. It ain't like diabetes, like they all think. Yeah, let this wealthy, now found philanthropic man, only, only so, because I have a gun to his head. Actually, it's my pussy stick threatening to bar him address to my golden permanent strap on. Shit. <laughs> I'm doing him karma a favor at this point. My body aches so much for 22 years of living with AIDS. I want to anesthetize it and have philanthropic slaves massage me all day while I'm doing my social work. I want him to declare a trust fund for me so I can be a lady of charity. Fuck it, Calgon, take me away. <laughs> I want my TV show and my rock star friends mentoring queer kids and have them play with them at Madison Square Garden. I want him to buy an endless supply of gold water to cleanse my insides out daily. Fuck, first I have to get out of bed. <laughs> Thank God AIDS hasn't come for my face yet and I can make some money, honey. I will be the pop tranny penetrating the psyche of our next generations. And one day, maybe I'll come back and see all my work shining. Maybe not in this lifetime, but it will all happen one day. Faith is my middle name, trust. Maybe I'll be transported in my death and come back as a movie star. And I'll have a little tranny child and can give them the best of everything. And Oprah will invite me to invite us to go riding at her stable when she's 90. I'll be a happy actress, giving away my own money. You know, some days I could curse the first pages of Buddhism that I ever read, meaning there are times when this body hurts so and God seems miles away. There's so many assholes in the way. It seems like this that I could blow my head off, but I care too much still. At this point, I'd rather blow Bush and Cheney's heads off and the next Ameri and be the next American folk hero. But I can't do that either because it would be backsliding and my community would suffer. They'd say crazy tranny, friend of celebs, worked for government, spoke to Congress, etc. went mad the other day at the White House and blew the heads off the Preds and the VP. <laughs> nope, can't go there. Chloe. <laughs> poem too that like is the other side of that so this was um, you know this was just a short poem she did a lot of poems after that and um, this is like so that was her 2004 anger this is more like 2007 poem um, oh my words were brutal when I felt hurt vindication was printed all over my skirt yes vindication was printed all right, I'll just say these are songs. So she sent me songs and poems, so I think this one was a song. I'll start with it. Oh, my words were brutal when I felt hurt. Vindication was printed all over my skirt. Yes, vindication was printed all over my skirt. Well, what's said is said, and what's done is done. Lack of words took away the sun. I don't want words to take away my son. Oh, words are trouble when they cause things to come undone. Yes, words are trouble when they cause me to come undone. When will I learn to keep my big mouth shut? When will I learn to use words to cut? I don't remember using words to cut. Maybe after all the years alone, I learned to open and shut. Yes, after all the years alone, I forgot to open and shut. It's not my time to pick and choose. It's a game that I just recently learned to lose. 
not a game anymore, testing the fire and ice. I already drowned once, no can't be twice. I already drowned once, no can't be twice. So I walk away and lay down to pray. Yes, I walk away and lay down my burden today. I retire from the brilliant drama that once recently was me. It feels so peaceful, like swimming in deep blue under a purple tree. Yes, I lay me down to sleep under the sea. I won't be going after anything anymore, because if it's not in front of me, then it's run out the door. Yeah, if it's not in front of me, then it's run out the door. Oh, there was a time when my mistakes set me run in a race, and the feelings that came spinning took me out of time and space. My own earthly mortality pushed me into a chase. It's something that came in from a secret sliding door. Funny how new things can come in from all kinds of new doors. Well, it's time to rest, and it's time to shield off the sly, bare-boned and naked. That's where truth can never die. And I know now that chase or pursue, it's all the same. And in the end, it's just a silly game. I think I've truly surrendered. Could I really be that tame? Am I honestly this tame? Is this wild horse really this tame? I am this tame. Can't believe I'm finally this tame.